I saw the comments from Gus Malzahn, and you somewhat alluded to them a few minutes ago about, number one, taking over the play calling again. And he made a general comment about, we're going to get back to winning and competing for championships. And he kind of put that pressure on Mm -hmm. himself. Your thoughts? Yeah, he's he's betting on himself. The problem I have with Malzahn, and this is what I, I tell people, what makes Nick Saban so good. You know, Mark, you've been around it a long time. I, most most coaches that get to the point that they're hired as a head coach in a major program are good football coaches, okay? They're, they're good football coaches. They wouldn't get that opportunity without proving that they're a good coach. They know the X's and O's. They know how to run practices. The challenge now, I think, with, you know, you hear the term all the time with Nick Saban, organization. These really are organizations. And running an organization as a head football coach is a lot like being a CEO. It's a big challenge. For Gus Malzahn, I think he's an excellent offensive football coach. I mean, as far as just having a, a mind and, and being able to draw up plays, I think he's really good. I think he struggled with how to run the program. And it's how, look how many times he's gone back and forth with this now. He came to Auburn in 2013 as the play caller. They had a great year. They played for the, they played for the BCS National Championship against Florida State one year after going 3-9 and nine and 0-8 mm-hmm. in the SEC. A couple years later, after a couple of down years, well, I can't I can't call the plays. It's too much. Your head coach can't be a play caller. I'm going to hand it over to Rhett Lashley. All right, then he, he goes back to calling him for a while. Then Chip Lindsey comes in. I trust Chip. Chip's going to call the plays. Uh, this year was a fiasco. So now he's going right back to, well, I need to call the plays. That's who I am. Well, who are you? Okay? Uh, you've, you've, you've been all over the map. I don't think the consistently good head coaches – flip-flop back and forth. Six and six, he may be made for, he's going to be out. So what he's saying now is, next year's a make-or-break year for me. My best chance to win a lot of games is to call the plays. So I really don't have an issue with it, bringing in the 29-year-old offensive coordinator from Memphis to kind of be his understudy, and the guy has no desire to call the plays. I think that's Auburn's best bet. But he, it's you know, it's a year-to-year deal. You know, if next year they're three and three after six games, maybe he goes back to saying, "Well, it's not working with me calling the plays." I think you've got to have a philosophy and you've got to stick to it. Doesn't mean you can't evolve. Doesn't mean you. But if I'm an Auburn fan, I'm worried that it's gone. It's all over the map. You know, just two years ago he was saying it's too much for a head coach to call the plays now. Lincoln Riley does it, and he's going back to doing it. We'll see how it works. I do think for Auburn next year. That's the best chance for them to win games is for Gus to call the plays and let Kevin still handle the defense. Hey, Gary, I love the discussion. Thanks so much for stopping by. I know you've got a ton going on, so thank you so much. Enjoyed it, Mark. Good to catch up with you. Thanks, Gary. Take care. All right, bye.